Hello, I'm Dr. Christopher C and this series is the world's most boring anatomy videos. No diagrams, no explanations, just me reading anatomy to you. In this video, we're going to cover the core topics of the anatomy of the eyeball, and they are the three layers of the eye, the ten layers of the retina, the five layers of the cornea, the lens, the anterior and posterior chamber, the flow of aqueous humour, the nerve supply, and the blood supply. So there are three layers of the eye, the outer fibrous layer, the middle vascular layer, and the inner neural layer. Let's start with the outer fibrous layer. It consists of two parts, the sclera and the cornea. Now these both surround the eye. The sclera is the white part made mostly of collagen and elastic, and it supports the outside shape of the eye. It is continuous anteriorly with the cornea, which is this clear avascular structure at the anterior of the eye to let the light in. The area where the cornea meets the sclera is known as the corneal nimbus. There are five layers in the cornea, starting from the outside in, it's the epithelium, the Bowman's membrane, the stroma, decimates membrane, and finally the endothelium. For the middle vascular layer, there are three structures, the choroid, the ciliary body, and the iris, and together they are known as the uvea. Let's start with the choroid. This is a vascular layer in the eye, in the middle of the eye. It contains mostly connective tissues and provides a blood supply. The next structure is the iris. That's the coloured part of the eye, and that limits light entry into the eye, forms sort of a circle around the pupil. It consists of two muscles, the sphincter pupillae that contracts the pupil, the dilator pupillae that does the opposite, and the anterior part of vascular stroma, and on the posterior there's this heavily pigmented layer, two cells thick, that blocks the light. Finally we have the ciliary body, again a structure with an epithelium and muscles. Uh, this time it has an inner non-pigmented layer and that produces the aqueous humour. The outer layer is pigmented. Finally, it has the ciliary muscles, and they connect to the lens um, through these fibres that are known as the zonules of zin, and relaxing the muscles, interestingly, tenses the fibres. Contracting the muscles relaxes the fibres. There are ten layers in the retina, and starting from the inside, we're going to have the inner limiting membrane. The optic nerve fibre layer is next, the ganglion cell layer, the inner plexiform layer, then the inner nuclear layer, then the outer plexiform layer, then the outer nuclear layer, then the external limiting membrane, the photoreceptor layer, and finally the retinal pigment epithelium. What's underneath that? Outside of the retina, it's still the choroid. Their contents generally, if you think about nuclear, it's to do with cells and cell bodies, so the outer nuclear layer, is for photoreceptors. The inner nuclear layer is for bipolar cells and the ganglion cell layer is for retinal ganglial cells. Any layer with plexiform in it is really for synaptic connections. Some important areas of the retina macroscopically. Um, the macula describes this oval shaped pigmented part of the retina and that provides generally central vision, very high resolution and colour vision and that contains a number of structures including the fovea. Now the fovea is a small pit or depression that is packed with cone cells and it gives you the very sharp central colour vision. The optic disc is located nasally to this fovea and it's where the ganglia cell axons leave the eye and therefore no rods and cones are present in this area and therefore it's a blind spot. We'll now talk about the anterior chamber and the posterior chamber. So the anterior chamber at the front of the eye is rather shallow. It's filled with aqueous humour that you know is now produced from the uh, ciliary body. And the posterior chamber, rather differently, is filled with vitreous humour. And unlike the aqueous humour, which is um, a sort of very fluid substance that contains a nu uh, nutrients for the anterior chamber, the vitreous humour is gel-like. It's mostly water with some glycoproteins and it's not constantly replaced. The sequence of the flow of aqueous humour starts at the ciliary body from the non-pigmented epithelium. It is secreted into the posterior chamber where it flows through the pupil into the anterior chamber. It then goes via a trabecular meshwork on the side 
into the canal of Schlem, and through this canal exits to the episcleral veins where it is then drained into the venous system. The lens, which sits between the anterior and posterior chambers, is an avascular transparent structure which receives nutrients from the aqueous humor. It consists of three parts. The outer lens capsule, which is basically a basement membrane. Underneath this lies an epithelium, which is in the anterior portion. And finally, lens fibers form the bulk of the cells. And these are thin, transparent structures, allowing the lens to be flattened or thickened, uh, depending on what you need to focus light. Cataracts are formed from the degeneration and opacity in this structure. Finally, we have nerve and blood supply. Sensation of the cornea comes from ciliary nerves, which are from the nasociliary nerve, which itself branch from the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve, that's cranial nerve 5. The special sense of sight goes via the optic nerve, cranial nerve 2. The arterial supply are from branches of the ophthalmic artery, mostly the central retinal artery and also the ciliary arteries. Venous drainage is via the superior and inferior ophthalmic veins, which drain back to the cavernous sinus. That's all. Thank you very much and see you next time.